هو القرآن والفرقان إليه تنصت الأكوان وفيه تعطر الآذان والقرآن ضياء يملأ الآفاق ونور يبعث الأشواق وفيه محاسن الأخلاق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الطالين قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتبع تخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين today is Sunday, 18th, the sixth day of Ramadan, 1442, which is equivalent to 18th of April, 2021. We'll proceed with our program, Understanding the Final Message, in which we have started with Revelation. We already treated Revelation. We know what Revelation is all about. We know the methods of Revelation. And now we have started yesterday discussing about the stages. The first Revelation came from preserved tablet to the lowest heaven. Then from the lowest heaven to prophet peace be upon him in segment. This program is for Muslims and non-Muslims to know more about the revelation which is the last and final revelation from God Almighty. As time goes on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve this last and final book of his for eternity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this revelation is a guidance for the whole world, for the entirety of humans and genes. As we discussed yesterday, Quran is the only book that remains in its pure form and the text is, the still, is still the same as it was revealed to Prophet, peace be upon him. Before we continue, 
with our topic. Inshallah, we will answer some questions from our Christian brothers and sisters. The first one says, why in Islam women are forced to wear hijab? Don't you think this is an operation and uncivilized the this question it is asking about hijab or veil actually veil or hijab did not start with the advent of prophet muhammad peace be upon him that is why whenever you see the picture of Mary, the mother of Jesus, she cover herself. She cover her head the way other pious women are covering their heads. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he brought the Quran and the law for eternity. That is why in chapter number 24, verse number 30 and 31, in verse 30, hijab for men is mentioned. Even men, they should observe that hijab. Hijab of lowering their gaze. It says, قُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَقُدُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Say to the believing men that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty. In verse number 31 of chapter 22, Surah Nur says, Say to the believing women that they should lower their gaze and got their modesty. This is the reason and purpose for covering the body of women. This is hijab. This is hijab mentioned in the Quran. And Muslim women are respected with their body covered. They will not be teased by hooligans. And each and every person who come near them, he will not molest them. For he will not see the part of the body that will provoke his desire to maybe say something bad to them or to tease them or to rape them. This is what we should ponder upon. Quran brings solution to the rape that is rampant in our societies. If women are covering their body, as mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, there will not be rape everywhere in our society. And non Muslims also, they should respect this practice because it is mentioned in their own book it is says in the book of first corinthians chapter number 11 from verse 5 to 6 that women should cover their head any woman who doesn't cover her head is better for her head to be shaved it's better for a woman, a woman head to be shaved if she doesn't cover it. So this is mentioned in the Bible. This is in accordance with Christian Bible. Women who do not cover their head, their hair should be shaved. The second question says, what is the meaning of salvation in Islam and Christianity? Actually, salvation depends on individuals 
belief and work not only belief but belief and work as mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Asr chapter 103 from verse 1 to 3 Allah says wal asri inna al insana lafi khusr by time man is indeed in a state of loss illa alladhina amanu except those who believe wa amilu salihati and walk righteous wa tawassaw bil haqqi wa tawassaw bis sabr and they enjoy what is truth and peace and perseverance these are the only people who will be saved by believing in Allah by believing in the oneness of Allah by working righteousness keeping the commandments of Allah and by helping others to know the truth and by being patient and bearing perseverance this is salvation in the fold of Islam but in Christianity Bible teaches the same Bible teaches that whoever works righteous and believe in God he will be saved as mentioned in the book of Matthew chapter number 5 verse number 18 to 20 it says unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of scribes and the Pharisees you shall in no way go to the kingdom of heaven but churches believe in death and resurrection of Jesus as means of their salvation this is teaching of the church not teaching of Jesus because one of his followers asked him good master what good thing shall I do to go to life Jesus said why call it tell me good there is none good but one that is God if you want to go to life keep the commandments Jesus did not say if you want to go to life believe that I come to die for you he says keep the commandments of God this is working righteousness and he was asked by another person in the book of Mark chapter number 12 verse number 29 which is the first and best commandments which commandments is the first Jesus said Shema Israelu Adina ila khaynu adina ikhad Here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one this is the best and first of all commandments so believing in God and working righteousness is what will give Muslim and Christians salvation not death and resurrection of Jesus because in the Old Testament Bible is telling us in the book of Ezekiel chapter number 18 from verse 18 to 20 the soul that sinned it shall die fathers shall not be killed for the sins of their children nor the children be killed for the sins of their fathers the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him it is mentioned again in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 24 verse number 16 fathers shall not be killed for the sins of their children nor the children be killed for the sins of their fathers so this is a proof no one can take the burden of another as mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Isra chapter number 17 verse number 15 and the belief of inheriting the sin original sin is from the churches they believe Adam's sin for eating forbidden fruits and Jesus will come and die for the sins of humanity because we all inherit that sin of eating forbidden fruits but this verse clearly says 
Fathers shall not be killed for the sins of their children, nor the children be killed for the sins of their fathers. Adam was created in garden, and God said to him, do not approach this tree, but everything in the garden you are free to eat. Adam was tempted by the serpent, or his wife was tempted by the serpent. Adam and his wife, they ate the forbidden fruit. Then they realized their mistake. In Islamic perspective, both Adam and his wife, they were forgiven. But God drove, drove them from paradise, from the garden to this world. Even in the Bible, God forgave them. And God Almighty, he said, in the book of Genesis, chapter number 16, from verse 17 to 19, as for woman, she will bear pain while giving birth to her children. This is punishment of eating forbidden fruits. And for man, he must work hard before he gets sustenance for his family. And the burden is on his neck for feeding his family. This is punishment to both Adam and Eve. That is why Jesus is not to die for anyone's sin. And Jesus did not say he come to die for anyone's sin. This question says, This one says, is eating pork permissible in Christianity? This one is asking, is eating the meat of swine or pork permitted in the Bible? Actually, even from the biblical text, eating pork is not permissible. In the Quran, we know Allah forbids eating pork that is meat of swine blood and dead meat Allah forbids all this it is mentioned in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 173 and the chapter 5 verse number 3 and chapter number 6 verse number 165 and chapter Number 16, verse number 15. Allah says, Hurimat alaykum al maytatu wa damu wa lahum al khinzir wa ma uhilla li ghayr allahi bi. Forbidden to you for food are Hurimat alaykum al maytatu, dead meat, wa lahum al khinzir, wa damu and blood, wa lahum al khinzir and the meat of swine. All these are forbidden to you. Wa ma uhilla li ghayr allah. And any food in which the name of other than Allah is mentioned is invoked. All this is forbidden for us. First in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 173. And in the book, uh, and in Surah Ma'idah chapter number 5 verse number 3. And Surah An'am chapter number 6 verse number 165. Lastly, in chapter 16 Surah Nahal verse number 15. In all these places... Eating the meat, the meat of swine is forbidden. Eating the meat of swine is forbidden in the fall of Islam. And even in Christianity, it is mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verses 7 and 8, meat of swine is forbidden. Meat of fig is forbidden in the Bible. And again in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, Verse number eight, meat of fig is forbidden. Meat of pig is forbidden. Meat of swine. So Bible clearly forbids eating the meat of pig. This question says, it says, does Muslim or Islam believe that Jesus was crucified 
Actually, Muslims do not believe in the crucifixion of Jesus because of the verse of chapter number 4, Surah Nisa, verse number 157. It says, And they say in boast, We kill Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. Allah says, They kill him not, nor did they crucify him. But it made to appear to them so. Those who differ in the matter, they are full of doubt. They have no certain knowledge. They are only following conjecture. For surety, they kill him not. This is from the glorious Quran. So Muslims do not believe in the crucifixion of Jesus. Even from the biblical narration, Jesus did not die on the cross because all his disciples, they forsook him and play and played at the time when he needed them most. When he was about to crucify, they all forsook him, they fled. They fled, as mentioned in the book of Mark, chapter number 14, verse number 50. And Jesus, after the alleged crucifixion, he met his disciples in the upper room, as mentioned in the book of Luke, chapter number 24, from verse 36 to 40. He appeared to his disciples because they do not know what happened. They were afraid. They believed that he was killed. He showed his hands and his feet. He said, handle me and see, it is I myself. Why are you terrified? It is I myself, handle me and see. It is blood and flesh, flesh and bones, as you see me have. Do you have anything to eat? And they gave him broiled fish and honeycomb, and he took it for, uh, before them to prove that he did not die. So Jesus did not die in accordance with these verses. And when Mary of Magdalene went to the tomb on Sunday, early, day or early in the morning, on first day of the week, she found the stone removed from the entrance of the tomb of the tomb of Jesus. As mentioned in the book of John chapter number 20, verse number 1. It says, Mary of Magdalene went to the tomb, but she found the tomb empty. Jesus was not there. If Jesus died and he was placed in, into a, that tomb, stone need not to be removed from the entrance of the tomb because he will raise spiritually, not physically. There is no need for dough to come out from. So Jesus did not die. And in the book of John, chapter number 20, verse number 17, it says, Jesus disguised himself as gardener because he was afraid of the Jews after the alleged crucifixion. Mary of Magdalene saw someone dressed like a gardener. She went to him, asking him about Jesus. She recognized it was Jesus himself. Jesus was recognized by Mary. She was trying to hug him. Jesus said, touch me not because I am not yet ascended to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Jesus did not die even in accordance with all these facts from the Bible. And Jesus said before the alleged crucifixion that he will be like Jonah, as mentioned in the book of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38 to 40. Some scribes and Pharisees came to Jesus. They asked him about sign. They said they want to see sign from him to prove his Messiah, to prove his, uh, to prove, to prove his prophethood. He said, you wicked and adulterous generation, seek it after the signs. There is no sign given to it but the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. 
So, in accordance with these verses, Jesus said he will be like Jonah. Because Jonah was gobbled up by fish, by well, and he spent three days and three nights. Then he was praying inside the belly of the fish. Then the fish went to the shore and gobbles him out. So Jonah was alive. This is a miracle. Three miracles performed by Jonah. First, he was thrown into the sea. Second, he was swallowed by the fish. Third, he spent three days and three nights inside the belly of the fish. All these three miracles performed by Jonah should be performed by Jesus also. Supposedly, Jesus performed all these miracles so he is prophet of God in accordance with what he said in these verses. But unfortunately, when you ask a Christian, when did Jesus die? They will say he died on Friday. He was put into the tomb on Friday. So he gets Friday night, Saturday day, and Saturday night. But early in the morning on Sunday, as I mentioned, Mary of Magdalene went to the tomb, but she found the tomb empty. So he only got two nights and one day, not three days and three nights. So this prophecy is failed. It's failed. So Jesus did not die in accordance with all these facts. There are many facts about this theory of crucifixion because this is not in accordance with even biblical facts. Inshallah, we will proceed with our topic of revelation. We have already treated two methods of revelation. That is direct and indirect revelation. Direct revelation is when a prophet sees in dream the message from God. As Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam dreamt of sacrificing his son in chapter number 37. And Prophet Muhammad also, he received revelation while in a dream once. Chapter number 107. That is in the agriculture. Direct revelation is through the agency of Archangel Jibril, as did to all the prophets of God. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he received the direct revelation from Archangel Jibril, sometimes like ring of a giant bell reverberating until the ring ceases prophet peace be upon him realize and understand what was revealed to him then archangel Jibril used to come to prophet peace be upon him in a form of man living the spiritual world and taking the form of a man to give prophet peace be upon him message from God Almighty. So now we will continue with the forms of revelation. As I mentioned yesterday, revelation of complete Quran was revealed from the preserved tablet to the lowest heaven. To the lowest heaven and from lowest heaven segmented revelation came to prophet peace be upon him the Allah says regarding the first revelation that is complete Quran which was revealed in a period of 23 years this is a verse that says Hamim wal kitab al mubin Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim Hamim wal kitab al mubin 
إنا أنزلناه في ليلة مباركة إنا كنا منذرين الله سيس حميم والقرآن والكتاب المبين حميم by clear book verily I reveal it in a blessed night Allah said he revealed the glorious Quran in a blessed night and Allah says inna anzalna fi latil qadr verily I reveal it on the night of decree and Allah says shar ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al Quran hudal lin nas the month of ramadan in which I reveal the Quran as guidance to mankind these verses have to refer to the initial revelation because it is known fact that the whole Quran was not revealed to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him on a single night in Ramadan. Ibn Abbas stated that the Quran was first separated from its station in the upper heavens and placed in Baitul Isa in the lowest heaven. The version states that this took place on the night of the Kiri in Ramadan. Had it been Allah's wish, the Quran could then have been revealed as a whole to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in a single revelation. There is also wisdom behind sending Quran in segment to Prophet peace be upon him. The second revelation from the lowest heaven to Prophet peace be upon him. Of the Holy Quran were then taken down by the angel Jibril. This process of revelation continued over the 23 years of the prophethood. This revelation began with the first five verses of Surah Alaq. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم الله سيس اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق Read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists. He has created man from a cloth, a piece of thick congelated blood. Read and your Lord is the most generous. Who has taught the writing by the pen? He has taught man that which he knew not. These five verses of the glorious Quran were revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during the first night of revelation from Baitul Isa to Prophet, peace be upon him. So, this is the first revelation segmented while he was on a spiritual retreat in the cave of Hira near Mecca. However, the first complete surah to be revealed was Surah Al-Fatiha. The revelation of this portion of Quran marked the beginning of the final phase of prophethood. The last surah to be revealed was Surah Al-Nasr. The first completed chapter of the Quran to be revealed to Prophet, peace be upon him, was chapter Fatiha, opening Fatiha. It was com it was revealed completed in its complete form, not portion of the verses or verse by verse, but it was revealed in its complete form. And Surah Nasr, Idaja Nasrullah, was the last completed chapter of the Quran that was revealed to Prophet peace be upon him. The surah was brought down in Mina 
during the farewell Hajj of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which took place at the end of the tenth year after the Hijrah. According to Ibn Abbas, the last verse to be revealed was verse 281 in Surah Al-Baqarah, the last of the series of verses dealing with interest. Allah has referred to the second revelation in the following way. Quran. وقرآنا فرقناه لتقرأه على الناس على مكث ونزلناه تنزيلا. This verse is from chapter 17. It is verse number. It is verse number 106. It says. And it is a Quran which I have divided into parts in order that you, Muhammad, peace be upon him, may recite it to the people gradually. And I have revealed it by successive revelation. This is how Quran was revealed by parts. This part is revealed, part of this chapter, part of that chapter. It is unlike other scriptures other scriptures before the revelation of Quran were revealed in their complete and completed form to the various prophets of God the, the, there are a number of reasons why the second revelation took place in segments rather than all at once as happened with the former books of Revelation. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was faced with many trials at the hands of his enemies among the idolaters and the Jews. They called him a liar and a peck and tried every possible way to break his spirit. Whenever the pressure, the pressure of his opponents reached its peak, and become virtually unbearable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal certain verses to comfort the Prophet, peace be upon him. For example, Allah says, Allah says and those who disbelieve say why is the Quran not revealed to him all at once but it is like that in order that we may steady your heart with it and we have arranged its components parts in an orderly consistent manner this is mentioned in surah furqan chapter 22 chapter 25 verse number 32 allah will also give him confidence by reminding him of the trials of the former prophets and how they were eventually given success for example allah says وَلَقَدْ كُذِّبَتْ رُسُلٌ مِّن قَبْلِكَ فَصَبَرُوا عَلَى مَا كُذِّبُوا فَصَبَرُوا عَلَى مَا كُذِّبُوا وَأُوذُوا حَتَّى أَتَاهُمْ نَصْرُنَا وَلَا نُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكَ مِنْ نَبَئِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah says in Surah An-Am chapter 6 verse number 34 Verily the prophets before you were called liars but they were patient in spite of being accused of lies and in spite of the harm which befall them until my aid came to them. At other times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will actually promise him help and victory. As mentioned in Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 3, Allah says, وَيَنْسُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَسْرًا عَزِيزًا 
and Allah will help you with a great victory. Allah says again, Ulilazina Kafaru, Satuglabuna, Watu Sharuna, Elijah Hanam, Wabis al Mihad. Tell those who disbelieve, you will be defeated and gathered in hell, a terrible place of rest. Those certain segments of the Quran were revealed at various points in this mission, in his mission specifically to comfort the Prophet, peace be upon him, and give him steadfastness and confidence in order to fulfill his obligation of propagating Islam. The descent of revelation was a great burden which usually left the Prophet, peace be upon him, drained and weak. Aisha, mother of believers, may Allah be pleased with her, reported that once on an extremely cold day, she saw him where revelation came to him and left him, and in spite of the cold weather, his forehead was dripping with sweat. Even Allah himself referred to the Quran as being weighty and burdensome. Allah says, Inna sanulki alayka kawlan saqila. Verily, I will cast on you a heavy set of words. And in order to emphasize the greatness, power, and weight of the word of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set forth the following metaphor. Allah says, لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل اللي رأيته خاشئا خاشئا متصدعا من خشية الله If I were to have revealed this Quran to a mountain you will have seen it humbly crumble in pieces out of fear of Allah Thus the revelation of the final word of Allah in one stroke will have been too much for the Prophet peace be upon him to bear such a revelation will have placed him under the most extreme pressure. It was therefore broken down into bearable segments and revealed gradually. In this way, the Prophet, peace be upon him, will only be burdened for short periods of time and his mission will not be hampered by long periods of recovery. Thus, the segmented method of revelation represents the gentle manner in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with his last messenger due to the might and glory of the final message. The method by which the Quran was used to present the principles of Islam was a gradual method. All the scriptures were not enjoined in the beginning or all at once during any stage. The early surahs of the Quran were aimed at treating the main problem which, co which confronted the worship of Allah and his unity. Belief in Allah's supremacy and unity and to be built and the false God. Belief in Allah's supremacy and unity had to be built and the false gods of creation had to be removed. Thus the early surahs concentrated on Tawheed and the other major pillars of Iman, other major pillars of faith, belief in the resurrection and judgment. It was not until after 12 years of building Iman, building faith, that Salah was made compulsory during the Prophet's ascent Miraj to the heavens. One year before the Hijrah, the Quranic verse, verses began to stress Salah as a requirement for the believers. It was not until two years after the Hijrah that the Quranic verses turned to some fasting and zakah charity and enjoying them on Muslims. Finally, in the sixth year after the Hijrah, the verses of the Quran reveal Hajj as an obligation, as an obligation for whoever is able to perform it. Aisha, mother of believers, may Allah be pleased with her, mentioned that the first thing to be revealed 
of the Quran dealt with heaven and hell and that it was only after some time that issues of legal and illegal acts were dealt with she said if the first thing to be revealed had been don't drink liquor or don't commit adultery and fornication they would have said we will never give it up if the Quran had been revealed all at once it will not have been possible to establish the laws in the gradual fashion this method was particularly important for the first generation of Muslims who will later establish Islam in the earth it was necessary for them to have a clear understanding of the principles of Islam because the later generations of Muslims will depend on their interpretation and practice of Islam since the majority of the prophets followers were unable to read or write the main method of preserving the Quran become that of memorization so if the whole Quran had been revealed at once they will have been unable to memorize all of it due to its length even the few who were able to write will have been able will have been unable to record all of it due to the scarcity of writing materials at that time thus the revelation of the quran is sections made it easier for the companions to memorize the whole quran and each and teach it to other to each other umar bin khattab may allah be pleased with him was reported to have said learn the quran five verses at a time for verily jibril used to descend with the quran for the prophet peace be upon him five at a time this also made it easier for the scribes of the prophet peace be upon him to record all of the quran during his lifetime this early preservation of quran was critical to maintaining the purity of the teaching of islam as it was the alterations in earlier books of revelation which led their followers astray the gradual revelation of the quran also gave them a greater opportunity to contemplate the meaning of the verses this in turn caused them to question the prophet peace be upon him in order to clarify certain points of ver certain points or verify certain interpretations thus this generation was able to gain a truly deep understanding of the quran this was of great importance because their practical implementation of the principles of the quran become a guide to later generations of muslims and continues to be one to the day to this day continues to be one to this day such an understanding would not have been possible had the quran been revealed all at once so quran was revealed segments by segments and the reasons are given here for quran to be revealed segments by segments bit by bit or in piecemeal for prophet peace be upon him not to be overburdened because allah set an example with verse of the glorious quran had this message revealed to mountain this message of the quran if it is to be revealed on mountain the mountain will crumble in utter ruin due to the heavy burden of the message of the quran that is why even prophet peace be upon him whenever the revelation came to him he used to bear it with difficulty especially in a spiritual form when archangel jibril revealed it to him without entering the material world so quran was revealed for muslims
to memorize it for the early scribes of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to be able to memorize it small, small, so that they can be able to maintain the recitation made by Prophet, peace be upon him, and to memorize the whole Quran for the period of 23 years. So this is how Quran was revealed from Baitul Isa to Prophet, peace be upon him. This Quran is a book that was given to Prophet, peace be upon him, for our own understanding and for our own guidance. Whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim, as far as you are in this generation after Jesus Christ, from the time when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, start calling people to Islam, you are obliged to follow this book because it contains the messages of the previous scriptures. Because of time, I would like to stop here. Inshallah, tomorrow we will proceed with the same topic, revelation of the glorious Quran. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show his blessing upon us in this blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah make us among those who are forgiven, who are granted paradise, who are saved from hellfire. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Huwa al-Qur'an wa al-Furqan ilayhi tunsitu al-akwan wa fihi tu'attaru al-adhan wa al-Qur'an.